You're still on Walker Howard watch as it pertains to Ole Miss. But almost everybody that is covering this story and some people that are not that have other information, I had somebody tell me earlier today that would have known that Walker Howard was on his way back to Oxford. And it sounds as if Walker Howard to Ole Miss is going to be a thing that is done. There's an interesting wrinkle to the quarterback recruiting through the portal story. Neil McCready reported earlier today that it appeared as if not only Walker Howard was done, but also Spencer Sanders, the transfer from Oklahoma State, was going to end up at Ole Miss as well. Now, again, until that stuff is official, it's not official. Kind of crazy to think, though, that Ole Miss's quarterback room could go from just Jackson Dart on scholarship to a Jackson Dart as a returning starter plus Spencer Sanders, who was a multi-year starter at Oklahoma State and a former five-star high school recruit in Walker Howard, who is transferring in after redshirting this year at LSU. Walker Howard makes a ton of sense, obviously. It's basically like signing a high school player. That would be a big pickup. Uh, Spencer Sanders makes sense to me from Ole Miss's side. Uh, having two scholarship quarterbacks in your room is not a good situation. You, you would prefer to have more than that. And if you can get somebody with four years of starting experience, then you do that. Now, I've had people say things like, well, it could destroy the locker room. Well, if bringing in players destroys your locker room, then you got a really fragile locker room culture anyway. And it, it was going to be destructed with or without the addition of Spencer Sanders. But why on earth would Spencer Sanders want to go to Ole Miss at this point? That, that's what I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around is why would you want to go there? Because he has one year of eligibility left. He has started four years in college. And he's been good. Not great, but he's been good. But coming into a place and unseating an incumbent starter who played better than you last year, younger, years younger, in a much more difficult conference, why would you do that with your final year of eligibility? That's, that's what I can't wrap my mind around. I, and look, if, if you're Ole Miss if, and he comes in and he beats out Jackson Dart, great. But I've watched a good bit of Spencer Sanders, not every game, but a lot of it. There's nothing about his game that tells me he's going to come in and take over for Jackson Dart. Nothing that tells me he's going to. Maybe Lane Kiffin sees it otherwise. But when when you've got seemingly opportunities to go start somewhere with your last year, why wouldn't you take those as opposed to going Ole Miss and probably not starting there? I don't get it. Is, Is Ole Miss not sold on Dart? Is that what they're telling Sanders? No, I wouldn't think that they would tell that him you, that. You do this I, would, and, I would think that. Well, I mean, you know, you just tell him that you have a real chance to compete for the starting job. But I mean, I would, I would say that that's sort of the same situation, Mississippi State. You can say that, but who, who would believe you? So, I mean, what are the, what are they telling him? I mean, it, because it's the same situation again. If if Sanders comes in and wins the job, I don't see Dart hanging around especially with Howard there. So, I mean, that's just a weird situation. Which Dart doesn't, at least as the rules are written right now, have the ability to have that free transfer where he doesn't have to sit out. I mean, we say that, and and JT Daniels is at his fourth college. So, I mean, I'm I'm pretty sure he'd get there if he wanted to get out. Perhaps. I don't think that's necessarily the message that Ole Miss is sending. I think Ole Miss is sending the message that, hey, we've got to have depth in the quarterback room. We've got one scholarship quarterback who is one play away from not being able to play because that is the nature of college football. We're not promising you anything, but we will promise you that you'll have a chance to compete. And if you believe I in get yourself that, and I, you San- want to take a shot at a SEC job, then maybe you think you are good enough to beat him out. But everything that Michael Borky said on the surface makes sense, right? It doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah, it, it doesn't. makes sense it, that it, it doesn't make sense. It yeah. doesn't add up at all. I, I, I'm flabbergasted by this situation. And, I mean, there's a chance, but if, if you're Sanders, maybe you don't like your options at the moment. He goes through spring, doesn't win the job, and he can hit the portal again 
because he has graduated. So he can use his one-time penalty-free transfer, graduate in the spring, in May, and hit the portal again and get around those rules. Maybe that's something he's considering. I've heard, and I don't know how much of this I believe, but I, I heard through mo- that that he's not like he, he's already preparing for the next stage after football, wants to get into coaching. And so maybe he sees this as an opportunity to play if he can, but if not, can kind of start working towards establishing his life after football. But that doesn't make any sense. None of this makes any sense. From his perspective, I don't get it. And also, from an NIL perspective, these are two pretty big targets. You got to figure that they're going to get decent deals. I mean, yeah. that's a lot of, of, of money to put into because you know, I mean, I assume Dart got money too. That's a lot of money in your in your QB room, you know, for just three guys. Sure. Um, 